Hello, Miss Barbara. How are you? Hi, Barbara. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. You too. So for the purposes of introduction and for those who might not know us, my name is Barbara Buama. I graduated Holy Child in 1996. Miss Barbara Newman is of Hobson 1994. She also is a graduate from Rutgers Business School. She holds a master's degree in accountancy. She also holds a Bachelor of Science degree in business administration and accounting from the Robert Morris University. She is a member of GFOA and a recent selected participant of the GFOA Leadership Academy at the College of Charleston, South Carolina. But I'm not going to tell you everything you need to know about Ms. Barbara Newman because that would take away from why we are here today. So why don't we just dive right into it? Ms. Barbara Newman, can you tell us a little bit about what you do professionally? Hi, so thank you for having me. My name is Barbara Newman, like Barbara said. I'm currently the Chief Financial Officer for the Housing Authority of the City of Durham in North Carolina. Um, so basically what I do, the Housing Authority is a subsidized housing provider. We are also a developer, property management company, and affordable housing investor within the city of Durham. Very nice. I'm sure that sounds like a whole lot, but you make it seem so easy when we talk about our jobs. So kudos to you. Now, can you share a little bit about your journey from Holy Child till now? So I left Holy Child in 1996 after A-levels. I was at the Ministry of Tourism doing my national service for probably about three months. And then I left to continue my education here in the United States. So initially I started out at Emory and Henry University in Southwest Virginia. Um, I've always, those who know me, I've always um, been in art. Um, I was an art major in Holy Child, you know, I was always drawing or, you know, I had paint all over me most of the time. And um, that was my major when I came here for college. I decided to minor in business administration because my dream was to open up my own graphic design business. Um, and then when I took my first accounting class, I fell in love with it. I've always been terrible in math because I have a very weak math background. So I'm the last, I'm within the last old system um, for the A-level, the last A-level old system group. Um, so I skipped from class four to form one. So I don't have a very intense background in math. And it was always so challenging for me until I took accounting and I realized that the concepts were very, very interesting to me. And I was like, wow, I can do this. And so I actually dropped my graphic design major and started, you know, majoring in accounting. Yeah. Now, what would you say was that aha moment where you knew that this is exactly, because I know you talked about, you know, taking that accounting class and then feeling like, well, actually I like this. So was there an aha moment where you felt like, okay, this is what I need to be doing, or this is exactly where I want to be? Was that, was there ever that moment? I think probably after my first exam in accounting, I aced it and I was really excited. Um, I realized then that the concepts came easily to me. I really give a lot of credit to my first accounting professor. He was awesome. Um, and it was the first time that I had done something out of my comfort zone, right? Um, that I was comfortable with. I, I did not have to struggle. You know, I understood the concepts and I was like, wow, this is not work. It's not work to me at all. So I have to pursue this. So now what does the future look like for Barbara Newman in terms of career or a profession? So right now I, I would say, you know, I, I'm open, right? I'm open to whatever comes my way. I've, I've realized um, that when, when you make plans, you know, God has other plans for you. So I'm just open to whatever um, God has come in my way. Okay. Does that also include perhaps transitioning from what you currently do into something else? 
So recently, I've just been involved in developing a curriculum for CFOs um, all over the country. There are about 3,500 housing authorities in the United States. Um, a few years ago, I actually went to um, NARO, which is the National Association for Housing and Redevelopment Organizations. Um, I sat at a round table um, with CFOs and I realized that I was the only black female mm. um, in the room. It, it was very surprising to me, you know, a lot of times, you know, people say this is a male dominated field. Um, you don't even realize it until you're in it. And so I, that is when I decided that I wanted my voice to be heard. I want my face to be seen. Um, so I got involved with the organization. Um, we're really developing a CFO curriculum with the University of Southern Florida um, to encourage, you know, accounting professionals um, in the industry to actually work towards becoming CFOs um, in the housing authority industry. Mm, that sounds so right. I, I can, you know, that's, that's where I think I see myself going um, now. Wow. That's, I think that's definitely ambitious. I like that you are open to, you know, other things. Cause sometimes I feel like most of us are usually stuck in oh, perhaps this is all I can do. And we don't even want to look outside of that, uh, perhaps because of some of the challenges that even transitioning will present. So what three things actually uh, make you who you are today? So the first thing I would say is um, I try to keep learning, you know, wherever I find myself, you know, you have to remain teachable. Um, in, in every place that you go to. So when I'm presented with, you know, something challenging or if I don't know how to do something, I try to learn from the people who, who do. Um, I will read about my industry, you know, always keep abreast with what is happening because your knowledge at the end of the day is your power. Um, and then I surround myself with uh, people who challenge and encourage me. Um, I have a strong, you know, close-knit family and friends that always will hold me accountable. Um, they encourage me to keep doing bigger and better things. And um, the last thing, of course, I will say is um, I, I always try to have um, the encouragement not to be afraid to fail. You know, so if you don't try something um, then you, you'll have regret for it. But if you're afraid of failing, then you're never going to, you know, take a chance. I love that. Afraid of failing. Don't we all have those insecurities? I'm glad you touched yes. on that. Um, so what advice would you give um, that, the young Barbara? Is there anything you would tell that young, innocent girl today? I, the first thing I would say that, you know, you're enough. Just, just as you are, you have to keep being your authentic self. Um, and basically you have everything you need to succeed um, within you. Um, when in moving, you know, when in Holy Child, I know a lot of people will say, oh yeah, you were jovial and, you know, transitioning and coming to a new country. You know, the first thing people started questioning was, oh, you have an accent. I don't understand what you're saying. You know, your confidence really is torn apart. I wasn't, you know, back in Holy Child, I would read in front of people. It wasn't a problem. I was, you know, reading at mass. When I came here, you know, I would never raise my hand up in school to read in class because people were like, I don't understand what you're saying. You know, do you speak English? You know, that kind of thing. It, it kind of, it really messes with your confidence, you know? Um, and so if I could go back and tell myself anything, I would say, you know, you're enough. There's no reason to be afraid of being different it's actually something that will work in your favor now i know you wear many hats your daughter your sister you're an auntie you're a friend is there anything such as work-life balance and if the if it does exist for you can you explain to us how you're actually able to achieve that so I, I don't, I struggle with that a lot. I mean, a lot of people will say I work too much, you know, I'm always working. Um, but one thing that I have found is that, you know, being intentional about spending time with God, spending time with myself, um, every morning I make sure the first thing I do, you know, is just make sure I talk to God, you know, just for an hour, that's just me and God. And it helps me throughout the day. 
Um, and then I'm learning, you know, slowly to just stop. You know, you have to stop and rest. Um, otherwise, you don't have enough. You know, you don't have enough strength. You're tired all the time. You may be stressed out. Um, so when you're tired, just stop. You're not quitting. You just stop, and then you're refreshed, and then you continue. You know. Yeah. Now, so I know you said you don't have that work-life balance right now, um, and that you're working on it. So my assumption with that is you do have family that you sometimes have to be intentional with in terms of spending time together or creating memories together. How has family support of your uh, career been like? Because they have to, I, I'm sure, be understanding of the fact that, well, why you're working so much, perhaps because you want to get the set in place. Can you touch on that a little bit and how that has helped? I, you know, I... I can honestly say I have the best family in the whole wide world. Um, you, you know my sisters, you know, all of us went to Holy Child. My mom was a Hobson. Uh, we, we didn't have a choice, right? <laughs> but we are a pretty close-knit family. Um, my dad is like my number one um, fan. He sees you do something and he encourages you. Um, and so having that support is very important to me. Uh, my mom, I remember when I first went to Holy Child, because in my year group, I was one of the youngest, right? And it was, you know, we started out about 120 students, I think. And, you know, it, it didn't matter at that time, you know, how smart you were from where you came from. This is 120 or 100 and, you know, 19 more people that you have to compete with in a way. And I, you know, my first thing was like, I can't do this. First of all, I'm only 10 years old, you know, and she bought me a book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I still have it today. Um, I read it all the time. There's a lot in there that, you know, encourages me to say that, you know, there's nothing that you cannot do when you put your mind to it. Um, so that, you know, my family is awesome. I have two very awesome sisters. Um, they're both here. And so, you know, we always try to spend a lot of time together. Um, so that that really is helpful. Very nice. I'm happy to know that, you know, it, it might sound cliche when they say it takes a village, but it appears that you do have that village that supports you. And so um, I'm happy for you. Now, how would you say your journey or your education from Holy Child School has prepared you for this moment? I would say that because I grew up with a lot of girls, right? I mean, I have two sisters, right? And then I went to Holy Child and we were all girls. It was never, there was never a moment where you were thinking, oh, I cannot do something because I'm competing um, with a man. Like I'm in a male dominated industry, but there has never been a time where I, I have hesitated, right? To go head to head with the men at the table. Um, because so I think Holy Child gave me the nerve. I have the nerve to just get up and go without thinking, oh my, there's nobody here that looks like me. That doesn't exist. And that, that's definitely where it came from. Oh, that's good to hear. Now, I'm sure um, you know Holy Child is turning 75 in a few days. Um, is there any um, teachers, are there any teachers you, who might have helped in, in shaping who you are today that you want to give a shout out to? Um, you know, give a goodwill message, like a short message to at this point? So I'm sure all my mates will remember Miss Irene Okanse. She's my favorite teacher. Well, I was her favorite student, right? Um, but she told me something, I think in form four. Remember we used to have these um, slum books? I think that's what they were yes. called. Yes. Yeah. So she had signed one of mine. I remember her telling me that um, I should remember that um, spirituality was very independent. It was between you and God and nobody else. And then she also told me to remember that in a society, you always have norms. And so even when you stand out, you always want to make sure that um, you're working or living according to the norms of society. Not that you shouldn't stand up for yourself, because I was always one to you know, if something was black and white, I would say it. it didn't matter whether you're a teacher or, you know, if you're wrong, you're wrong, you know, but right. she really, that really has helped me because she told me, you know, you can be right, but it depends on, 
you know, where you are, that you can, you know, you should stand up for yourself, but within the norms that the society has um, provided. So shout out to Miss O'Kansley. I don't know where she is right now, but um, she really did have a real positive impact on me. I love Miss O'Kansley. I remember her very well. She, she was one of my favorites too. So um, it's good to hear that uh, it wasn't just me, but other people um, enjoy the benefit of having her for a teacher. So, well, we want to wish Holy Child well um, as we start our 75th anniversary celebrations. We are in this pandemic. Um, of course, we are grateful to be here and we are keeping everyone in prayer that everyone will stay safe and healthy. And hopefully in the next 25 years, we'll be here again to celebrate our centennial anniversary. So I want to say thank you very much, Ms. Newman, for giving us this awesome opportunity to get to know you a little bit more than we uh, normally would have. Um, thanks for sharing your journey with us. We are so grateful that uh, our mama mater could impact us so greatly that we could give back to this um, on this global scale. So thank you again. We wish you well and more success in the near future. Thank you, Barbara. Happy birthday, holy child. Yay, happy birthday.